All right, mate, how you doing? Welcome back to another episode of IMO. And in this episode, we're talking about some big news coming out of my club, West Ham. As Slaven Bilic has left, he's been sacked, he's been moved on, and David Moyes is the new incoming manager. I'm going to talk about exactly how I feel about these changes in this video. So let's go. Right, guys, first things first, the final game of Slaven Bilic's management at West Ham was obviously the defeat to Liverpool at home on the weekend. Uh, pretty, pretty convincing defeat, 4-1 to Liverpool. I was there, I vlogged it, I was going to upload the vlog. I'm not going to upload the whole vlog now, purely because it's a bit out of date, because I didn't know Bilic was going to get sacked, obviously. So some of the stuff I talk about isn't necessarily uh, relevant anymore. But here's some clips from the game and my reactions to some of those goals. <laughs> That was all right because we started quite well. Are you just went through after the stake from Liverpool's defence and hit the post? Could have been one 0 up. This is what we need to see here at the stadium: a bit more energy, a bit more effort from West Ham, and the crowd will get going. Come on! We started filming during that corner because I thought we might score. Instead, they absolutely flipped it on us, counter attack. They had such a advantage in numbers there. It was an easy goal to score. 1-0 down. It's a shame we've started positive. We've started well. Best passing I've seen for a while, best energy levels. We're 1-0 down and Liverpool could hit us here. They could get some more goals, we could be in trouble. We need to bounce back quick. It's happened again. Minutes after the first goal is now 2-0. Again from a corner, this time a Liverpool corner. It looked like they had some sort of plan. They whipped it in short, uh, near post. Straight at heart, he saved it. Easy rebound, 2-0. The game's going to get away from us now and we're going to get mugged off, I can tell you. We're going to get mugged off again. We're going to get mugged off again. Right, I've come in at half time for a quick drink and I have to say it's not looking good. But I'm worried that us West Ham fans are starting to become the architects of our own downfall. Because we went 2-0 down, two very quick goals. And then everything West Ham players did wrong got booed. Like, the players must feel on edge. I think there's a real disconnect between the players and the fans right now. And I think we have to work really hard to get that going again. Dead team, come on! Are we going to do it again like we did against Spurs? There's the first one, Hernandez gets it, nice little toe poke past the keeper, 2-1, game on, let's do it. Come on boys, another, let's get another one. Unbelievable, literally five seconds after we've scored, they've scored again. What a joke. Seconds ago, I was so positive, this whole atmosphere here was so positive, and now it's back to two goal deficit, 3-1. Our defence is embarrassing. It's all over. Mohamed Salah's got another one. 4-1. The crowd emptying on that uh, on that one. I'll show you. Everyone's off. Can't blame them. No, we're not coming back now. It's all over. Liverpool 4. West Ham 1. Well, that was disappointing. Another loss. Starting to get used to them now. So as you can see, it was not an enjoyable one, and it's been one game in a long list of unenjoyable games we've had at London Stadium over the last two seasons. The performances haven't been good enough. It's very simple. It's not necessarily about results, it's about performances, and West Ham have deteriorated big time. Last year, the whole Payet saga maybe was a bit of smoke and mirrors, because when he left, we did improve, and people maybe started to give pay it all the blame for our poor performances and I think he's he did affect the, the mentality of the change room a lot but Bilic has to take responsibility and Bilic is a difficult one because he's a very popular manager. I really liked him, a lot of West Ham fans really liked him, he's very hard not to like but that doesn't guarantee you job security. Results is what gets you job security in this business and Bilic hasn't been getting results. The thing that confuses me a little bit if I'm honest is I don't understand why the West Ham board decided to get rid of him after Liverpool defeat and not after the Brighton defeat. We lost 3-0 to Brighton a, a week or so ago in one of the worst performances I've ever seen in my life, quite frankly, in terms of the lack of energy, of passion, of commitment, of ability on display from our squad. It was disgusting. And when he kept his job after that game, I thought, well, they're not, not going to get rid of him. They want to save some money. They want to sack him. They want to let him ride his contract out, maybe. But then we lose to Liverpool, another game we lost by a three-goal margin, um, and we sack him. And we were a lot better against Liverpool than we were against Brighton, by the way. We actually created chances. They got a goal on the counter-attack before they went 1-0 up. We were actually the better team. We didn't deserve to get anything from the game over the course of 90 minutes, but we were definitely better than we were against Brighton. And obviously we've beaten Spurs in the League Cup. I'm not saying they should have kept Bilic, I'm saying it was weird timing. Personally, you don't expect anything, even at home against Liverpool. Even though their defence is questionable, our defence is questionable. Their attack is sublime. Salah, Mane, the pace they've got is frightening. And they hit us with it. And, you know, what do you expect? I'm not saying we, we should put up with the performances we've seen. 
But I certainly don't expect a win or even a draw against Liverpool. I expected something better against Brighton at home, newly promoted Brighton. We didn't get it. That, for me, was the sackable offence. That, along with the 3-0 the defeat to Newcastle away and a host of other bad performances. I just didn't quite understand the timing. But it's done. Bilic is gone. We move on. For me, this was a huge opportunity for the West Ham board to really prove their ambition, to match the supposed ambition they had when we, they moved us to this new stadium, where they want the club to go in the future, by bringing in a big manager and spending some of the cash they didn't spend in the summer. You know, we had this huge transfer kitty, supposedly, and um, we pretty much broke, it, broke even with our transfers. I know we've got some guys on higher wages now, but we didn't actually spend much money in the summer. So I thought maybe now they make a big offer to a number of out of work managers who are top quality. I'm not saying these guys want to come to West Ham. It could take a lot of convincing. But for me, they should have been trying for Ancelotti, for Tuchel. Maybe for Ronald Koeman, who's just left Everton, although it sounds like he might be going to the Netherlands job. Mancini, he's not even out of work, but let's get him in to West Ham if possible. Instead, though, they've opted for David Moyes. And this move has come under a little bit of criticism from West Ham fans and non-West Ham fans. Is he the right man for the job? Honestly, I'm not sure he is. I'm... I'm I'm always an optimist when it comes to West Ham. Obviously, I'll get behind David Moyes and his staff now and hope he does a great job and proves a lot of doubters wrong. Do I believe that he will? Not necessarily. I think it's a risky appointment, guys. I probably would have preferred Big Sam to come back. Whether Big Sam would have come back to us is another question. I personally wouldn't if I was him after the way he was treated at West Ham. Um, maybe even Alan Pardew, I don't know. David Moyes was very, very good at Everton. Fantastic. But he's gone to Manchester United in a, in a job that was probably set up to fail from day one. He had to follow... Fergie, he inherited an ageing squad, a squad that Fergie was happy to let go, um, and obviously didn't work out. And he was a bit of a patsy, some would say, a bit of a scapegoat. Um, it's not that, that it's, it's not his performance at Man United that worries me. It's his performances at the subsequent jo jobs after that. And also his decision making, the jobs he took. To go straight to Real Sociedad, I think maybe he wanted to get away from the, the constant criticism he was coming under in the press in England, so he wanted to get away to another country. But that was always going to be difficult, not speaking the language, trying to take over a Spanish team. He then goes to Sunderland, a club that had been perennially struggling in the Premier League for years and years and years, but just staying up. And he was the manager that actually oversaw their relegation. So we're a club that are in a relegation battle now, and we've decided to go and put in the guy who just got relegated with Sunderland. Is our squad better than Sunderland's last season? Definitely. But am I convinced he's going to keep us up? No, I'm not. I'm worried. I don't think you become a bad manager overnight. I think the things that helped him be a success at Everton will still be there. But I think his failures that he's had since then, and they are failures, they can't not affect you mentally. They can't not make him doubt his ability. And they must have had an impact on his ability to manage to the same degree he did before. My question is, did David Moyes have a place in time at Everton where everything was going great for him and his kind of methods and his approach to management worked well and that has now become outdated? I hope that's not the case. I hope that he can come in, prove me and everyone else wrong and, and if he does, you know, he can stay at West Ham for a long time. But the West Ham board have given him a six-month contract. They've basically given him a contract to the end of the season, right? Does that show faith? Does that, does that show that we want to build the club around David Moyes? The sort of stability that we need now at West Ham. They're not seeing that in David Moyes. They're not trusting him long term. And maybe he can earn that sort of contract. But you look at someone like Rafa Benitez, who came in at Newcastle when they were struggling. He came in much later in the season. And it was always going to be a big ask for him to keep them up. But he made a commitment to the club. And he was such a big profile manager that Newcastle were happy to stay with him in the championship. And he was happy to stay with them because Newcastle was a very well supported club. Answer me this. If David Moyes takes West Ham down, are West Ham going to want to keep David Moyes? Is he going to want to stay there? Are the fans going to want him? He's not Rafa Benitez level. He's not one of the things Rafa's won. There's another manager we could have gone for. Rafa Benitez. I would have liked us to go for Eddie Howe. He's struggling at Bournemouth. Why not make the switch to West Ham? More fans, more money to spend. But they've gone with Moyes and we have to live with that now. I do think it shows a lack of intent. I do think whether they try to get those, those bigger managers, who knows? Maybe they, made, maybe they made some calls. And maybe those managers wouldn't have been interested in the West Ham prospect, especially considering we're in a relegation battle right now. Make no mistake, we are in a relegation battle. But... I can't help but be a little bit unenthused by the David Moyes appointment. Um, we've got some big games coming up. Watford away is next. If Moyes can, you know, put a little bit of new life into the squad and help us get a result, which often new managers do do, then great, we can get some points on the board and we can get away from that relegation part of the table. But if he has a slow start, if he doesn't pick up some points in these next few games, because we've got a really hard Christmas run in, we've still got to play the likes of Chelsea, we've still got to play City, we've still got to play Arsenal. 
Are we going to pick up any points in those games? It's highly unlikely. So we have to start picking up points in the other games against the weaker clubs. The Brightons, you know, who we got smashed by. The Southamptons we got beat by. The Newcastle we got beat by. We can't keep getting beat by these teams. Our game against Watford, our game against Everton is going to be huge as they're struggling as well. Games against the likes of Bournemouth, games against the likes of Stoke. These are all going to be huge huge matches and we have to start winning them. Ultimately, I think getting rid of Billich was the right decision, albeit a little bit late. I think we should have got rid of him after the Brighton game, but we've done it now. I think we didn't show the ambition we should have in who we've appointed. I hope we did. I hope we tried to do things behind the scenes and failed, but I find it highly unlikely given the short period of time between Billich's departure and Moyes' arrival. But Moyes is here. Would I have made him manager if I was in charge of West Ham? No. I wouldn't have. However, it's done and we have to trust in it and we have to hope it works out. But if West Ham go down with that stadium, we will be a laughing stock. People love to pick on West Ham. People love to criticise us and we will be in for a torrid time if we get relegated. So David Moyes, I appeal to you, do whatever you can to keep us in the Premier League. That's all I'm asking for. I will take 17th right now and then we go again. If David Moyes was to get 17th, would I want us to keep him as manager for the next season? Who knows? January will be big. Who David Moyes decides to bring in in January? And he's got to bring in someone. He's got to bring in someone. And please, Moyes, do not bring in Steven Pienaar and Brian Oviedo and all these ex-Everton mates of yours who are way past it, okay? Do not bring them in. Bring in new players. There's other players out there, David. Get a scout. Go on, football manager. Do some research, pal. Honestly, January is going to be big. If he can bring in some good players and improve the squad and show that he's made an imprint on it and getting some results and he's inspiring the players, who knows about the relationship between Hernandez and Moyes. Apparently, Hernandez does not like him, so we'll see what happens there. But if he can get some results and he can save us from this relegation potential and get us up the league, maybe he could be a long-term manager for us. I don't know. I'm open to it. I'm open to it, but he's being judged from now until January and the transfer window there if the board trusts him and then to the end of the season. Keep us in the league and we'll talk, David. We'll talk. But what do you guys think? What do you think about the Slavin Bilic departure? What do you think about the David Moyes appointment? Who would you have made West Ham manager if it was your choice? Or maybe you do think Moyes was the right man for the job? Let me know in the comments below. Drop a like on the video if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe for more. I'll see you next time another one soon. Until then, don't go change it.